besties. I'm Toya from My Froggy Stuff, and today we are going to do my new craft room tour. And we would like to give a special thanks to Fathead for sending these Barbie decals to us as a gift. I don't know what's going on with the hair today, but we're just gonna go with it. Roll the B-roll footage. <laughs> beginning of this year, I said I wanted an organized craft room. That was one of my New Year's resolutions. And as the year progressed, I quickly learned that the only way my craft room was going to get clean is if I got a new room. Not even joking. We just needed to start over. So um, I was looking around the house and I noticed that the playroom, you know, wasn't being used. You know, both of my kids have gotten pretty big and they weren't using the old playroom that was filled with like elementary school books and Legos and all the toys that they had as, you know, little tiny kids. So I was like, yeah, I can use my current studio as storage, you know, just put a bunch of shelves in there, put everything in boxes, label them, and that's like my new storage room. And then I can use the playroom as my studio where I film and keep it neat and stay clean. And I love being in there because who really wants to hang out in like a super crammed craft room? I mean, some of you have those and it's all great. I mean, that was me like, couple hours ago. But after years of working in that, I just wanted to go minimal. Like I wanted a minimalistic type of craft doll room, film room that I can move around in and feel like it's all pretty, right? Sorry, this is like a whole story. But then Bella decided that she wanted the playroom. <laughs> Cause it had the two rooms. It had the little room, it had the big room. And so she wanted the playroom. And of course I couldn't, you know, say no. Ugh. So we're now in Bella's old room and she's moved into the playroom. Looking around here, you might think it's a little simple, but you know what? That's what we wanted. We wanted minimalism. We wanted organization. We wanted simplicity. So that's what we have. I painted the walls a really light gray and there's not a ton of things on the walls because we want things to stay pretty simple. However, we do have this giant Barbie logo from Fathead and it's pretty cool. It's literally humongous. It is on the wall above the craft table. Sorry, we have like a lot of trash cans in here. Um, come on, show the whole thing. There you go. This is a giant sticker. It's huge, but it is removable. And I know because it took me like three tries to get it in the spot that I wanted. So I kept peeling it off the wall and putting it back on. And it's just like the Barbie logo and the little Barbie head icon thing. Loving it. That thing right there. This is a, this is a dead kitten on a microphone. This is what we use for YouTube Live. It's how we can improve our sound. On my table, you will find an ot light. It's a nice little light there with a magnifying glass and when we're working with like really tiny stuff. My lovely little battery charging station and all of my cutting mats. We have quite a few. And yes, my cutting mats are pink. I don't have a problem with pink. I actually really like the color. I just don't want everything pink, even though all of my cutting mats are pink. I got this one at Pop Shelf. It was just $5. Love the color. Bought this one on Amazon as well as this one. Color's a little different, but it still works. And I wanted it to match, you know, the Barbie logo. This is one of my most favorite things ever. It's an 18 inch acrylic ruler from uh, Fliskers. I can never say this name, Fliskers, whatever. Anyway, I got it off of Amazon. It was like $7.99. I love this ruler. It's three inches wide and I use it for everything. It is my best friend when cutting foam board. Love this one. I have another one that's a little wider. This one's older, has paint all over it. And this one is six and a half inches by 24, I think. So that one also comes in handy when doing larger projects. I have two chairs in here, one for me and one for my mom, or whenever Bella decides to show up. 
These are old chairs that were just like sitting around our house, not being used. So I thought they would be perfect for this space. And uh, they're pretty comfortable. They're padded and everything. They're probably gonna get destroyed in here because this is a craft room. Having a comfy chair in the craft room is super important to me because I spend a lot of time in here and uh, you know, you wanna be comfortable. A rug is also super important because it's just gonna protect my carpet. And uh, this is another old rug that I've just salvaged from around the house. I like kind of busy rugs in my craft room because you can't really tell when they're covered in paint. The downside is uh, since we work with miniatures, <laughs> If you drop anything on a busy rug, sometimes it takes forever to find it. Right next to the craft table, we have a small doll display. I didn't want to display a ton of dolls. I just wanted a little something and that looked all pretty. It was decorated. So I brought in a few of my favorite dolls. Here we have Jet Dawson from Rainbow High, the absolutely fabulous RuPaul, one of my first Integrity Toy dolls from Barbie's signature. This is Tribal Beauty. Never taken this doll out of the box because there's like feathers and stuff and I'm just terrified that I'm going to ruin it. So she's gonna stay on display in the box. When we were putting the shelves in, I didn't take into account how tall this doll box was. I just went with like your basic Barbie box and yeah, clearly not high enough. Right next to her, we have one of our Disney collector dolls, Princess Jasmine. I think this doll is absolutely gorgeous, and it's one of the only Disney collector dolls that I have out of the box. On the next shelf, we have that doll that I found at the thrift store, one of those reproduction Barbies. I thought she was pretty fancy. Right next to that, we have the Andy Warhol Barbie that I found at Tuesday morning at a great deal. Right next to her, we have uh, one of the 20th anniversary Silkstone Barbies by Robert Best. Haven't taken it out of the box because the box is just so very pretty. Then here we have uh, Oscar de la Renta Barbie wearing a beautiful, gorgeous wedding dress. I also found this doll at Tuesday mornings. Very proud of myself. The Barbie signature Lunar New Year doll. Let's go up to the next shelf. And I am so sorry, but I am short, okay? <laughs> so I am having to stand on my tiptoes and yell here. This is the Poppy Parker Pretty Bird, I think that's what it was called. This is my only Poppy Parker doll that I currently own. Then here is the Ava DuVernay Barbie, love her. Another Silkstone Barbie, I think that one is best to tea. I think that's what it's called. I can't see the label because I am too short, but you all can read whatever it says if it's right there. Could be staring at literally nothing. Then we have the Dia de Mortos Barbie. Please forgive all of my pronunciations. If I am saying things incorrectly, it is not intentional. And know that I am trying. Underneath the doll display, we have some furniture pieces from Butterfly Family Miniatures. They're all made out of wood, absolutely love it. I believe there is an Etsy shop review for these pieces. And then underneath, we have my file storage boxes. I love these, I love these. They can hold so much stuff. I can label them and they look nice and neat in my studio. This is my potted plants box. And inside we have potted plants. Some I've crafted, some I've bought off of Etsy like these. This one comes from Dolls Flowers Etsy shop. Ugh, it fell over. And then a lot of them are just little fun finds that I've found through the years, and I'm storing them here to keep them neat and keep them close by. Then this one is currently empty. It's just waiting for me to decide on what should go inside it. Then at the very bottom of this case, I have all of our crafting books that I have collected over the years. Paper crafts, felt crafts. Most of these things I've done with my kids, you know, and stuff like that. And right next to it, these are all books of scrapbook paper. So I can just go through and pick out which book I need and use it. I have a lot of this particular uh, scrapbook because it's got really great textures in it. And I got this one from Michaels. 
I think I have like four <laughs> of that particular book. And this is like backdrops and seascapes and stuff like that. I love this one. I could talk about scrapbook paper all day, y'all. I love scrapbook paper. And I'm always looking for textures that I can use, things that we can use for wallpaper. Like ones like this are good for like wallpaper and stuff. And, um, you know, wallpaper. This one is like full of graffiti, which is pretty cool and useful. And wallpapers more wallpapers. I like buying the books when I can just because I find them a little easier to sift through and to keep organized and you get like multiple sheets in one book but sometimes you have to buy extra sheets because two pages might not be enough for whatever you're doing. This one is pretty neat. It's all marble and just some more older books. Okay. So those are my scrapbook papers. The stuff in this room isn't everything that I use. It's just like enough to get going a lot of times. If there's something in particular that I do need, I still have the storage downstairs in my old studio for more scrapbook papers and stuff like that. Can't put everything into this room because remember, we're trying to be minimal here. And this is my window. That's right, people, we have a window. So hopefully now I can take advantage of that natural sunlight for my photos. And I'm hoping that I can get better at taking photos with the more, you know, with more natural light and stuff like that. Real excited to have a window. Y'all have no idea how how special this is to me. Right next to the window, we have my film area. This is where I film all of the videos and this is all the equipment that I'm using. I will go through all of that. This is my slider. This is how I get the footage at the end of all of our videos where the camera's kind of moving around the object because this thing, you know, it slides on this rail here to give me pretty smooth footage and it is battery operated. I had to teach myself how to use it and uh, this was one of the things I was not overly excited about. <laughs> but it's pretty cool to see the camera moving slowly around things, but you know, it wasn't fun. This is my film camera. We've been friends for quite a while. Actually, we have very much a love-hate relationship. Um, I have an external mic with a pop filter because um, you try to reduce some of the pop, pop, pop kind of sounds that come out of your mouth. And this is my camera. It's a 4K something. I think it's Canon. I want to say it's Canon. On a tripod. Very big and bulky. Here we have my lights. And these are a lot smaller than my old studio lights. These are the lights we use for YouTube Live. But we moved them in here so they would take up less space. Because now we're going to do YouTube Live in here but these are awesome because I can change the temperature. I can change, well that's, I can change the intensity there, but I can change the temperature. I can make it cold, I can make it warm somewhere in between. So that's gonna really be awesome and come in handy. My film table is an up desk. That way I can control the height of the table. Here's a little, little buttons right there and it can go up and down by just pushing it. So, there, the table is going up, and then the table can go down. That is definitely one of my favorite things. I have a white paper backdrop up right now, and it's actually just hanging on um, curtain rods. These are Bella's old curtain rods. I took the finials off the ends, so we just have the pole, and I can take it down and up and change out the paper. And I buy the paper from B&H. It comes in a variety of different colors and I can just put it up there. See the little paper tube roll? You just put it over the curtain rod and then pull it down and we have our little backdrop. So if you look at the table right now, you can see that I am working on a project. It's gonna stay there until it's done. Another camera for YouTube Live 
And then this here is my baby, my sweet, sweet camera. I do love you. I've been with you for so very long. And this is what I use for most of my photography when I'm not using my cell phone. It's a Canon uh, 60D and uh, I've had it for a very long time and I do not want to change cameras because I know how to use this one, fairly decent, and I don't want to learn another one. Well, until I have to. You're probably wondering by now, Toya, where are the doll rooms? They're here. I have moved most of our hidden doll rooms into this space and they are so neat. I absolutely love it. Let me show you. And here they are, all of our hidden doll rooms. Well, almost all of them so far. And I have space on the bottom for a new one. Since we always make them to 13 inches tall, they can fit onto our cube shelf. I bought this at Ikea. Nope, I got this one at Target. And it's pretty neat. On the outside, we just see the label of the room. See, this is our toy storage unit and then that's all you see you just got to pull it out this one's actually falls down all the time but you just pull it out and then you can use it you know on the table or whatever and then it goes back nice and neat here I have a binder and I believe this is a binder of printables yeah so like extra printables or patterns stuff like that I store them in binders and I just label it. This one's school supplies, books, and lockers. Then right next to it, I use magazine holders to hold the dolls. So that's where the dolls are. This is literally a bin of mini Toyas. So we have young mini Toya, gray hair mini Toya, and rainbow high mini Toya. I'll fix this. Technically, I shouldn't call her young mini Toya. That's just Minnie Toya when she was dyeing her hair. She's still 40. She just dyes her hair. In the next cube, we have our office. This is a doll room. And then we have some more binders with clothes from Etsy shops that I have bought from. And I label them so we know exactly what store to give credit, even though I'm pretty good at remembering most of them. So let's take a look at this one. This is my dolly dolls. I have them in page protectors and then there's cardstock in between the pages and I can just put them in and use them front and back and flip through the book to find exactly which outfit I'm looking for. So don't have a ton of pieces in this one, but we can look at Logan's Locker 718 and Peachy Peachy London. This just really helps to keep me organized and I can flip through the book to see which outfits I want. By using the full size page protectors and like cardstock, I can fit full size dresses in here, keep them nice and neat, so they're always ready to go when I, you know, am looking for something to put on my dolls. And I am more likely to use something if I can find it easily. I mean, that's just like, you know, normal for most people. Then we have the Barbie style room with the credenza and the cast of Summer and Cali. So they're in these little magazine holder bins. And underneath we have more Summer and Cali. Then we have the Darby show, our kitchen, the attic, uh, articulated Chelsea, Caroline's daughter. She has to be in her own box because she's super delicate. Here is a pink Barbie clothes bin, and this one's gonna look a little different than the ones from our Etsy shops. In this one, we use a lot of the card protectors for all of the little individual shirts and stuff, and it just helps to keep everything super neat. It works for me. Here we have a page of just pants, and I've got the cardstock between the pages to help keep them flat. I was making little tiny paper body forms at one time, and that works too, it's really neat. It's just super time consuming, so I'll have to get around to that. And here I just kind of shoved some dresses in at the back, which I haven't sat down and organized yet, so not finished with this one. I have a binder dedicated to just uh, work in progress type stuff. And in here you'll see things that I've been attempting to do, like my big pants, they still need some more love. And I was working on a cute little suit pattern, which um, needs more time. So that's my work in progress folder. And we just have more doll rooms and more binders with clothes. 
everything like that. Oh, this one's literally just smart doll hands. <laughs> See, whole bin of just different types of smart doll hands because we have our smart dolls on the very top. Come on, camera. There we go. Finally displaying my smart dolls the way they need to be displayed. Most of them are wearing fashion from Elite Doll World on Etsy. I think only this t-shirt is from the actual smart doll uh, company, but everything else is from Elite and I dressed them all to match the aesthetic of the room. Yes, I did. Very gray, very neutral, loving it. Here is Genesis. Um, why can't I remember her name? Ugh, I have to go look it up. Then we have Reflection right there. And this is Resilient. Nostalgia, that's her name. Oh yeah, and we have another Fet Head sticker on the wall. It's another Barbie logo, but this one is smaller. Moving up past the smart dolls and to the closet. We have some storage in here as well. In here, I keep a couple of sets that are too large to go on the cube shelf. So these are the doll apartments that we made a while back. We will be using these real soon. So I went ahead and brought them up here. On top, we have some stuff still in packaging. Lori set our celebration horses from a few years at Briarfest. That caboodle is filled with like art supplies. Here I have filament, lots and lots of filament for the toy box 3D printer. Then we have some larger filaments that I bought off of Amazon. This is like a marble. It looks really pretty. And we have silver and gold. Then I use Barbie color reveal tubes. Hold on, let's just angle up a little bit. There we go. Barbie color reveal tubes, I use those for storage. And we have like our wooden dowels, our coffee stirs, and uh, toothpicks. Fans are very, very important for drying time, help to speed up that drying time. That is a Lottie doll house, like a clubhouse, and I was thinking about using that with my articulated Chelsea. Here she is, right here. This is Caroline's daughter from Summer and Cali. If you watch the bloopers, you'll know all about her. These are my cat tongs. <laughs> I really don't know what I was going to use them for. Actually, I do. I wanted to use them in a video, and we were gonna have them like pick stuff up. I thought that would have been hilarious. I see people doing that all the time in their like cooking videos, and I thought that would be cool, but I just kinda haven't got around to it. But now that I'm organized and they're right here, it might happen. I had my husband install this shelf in the closet and it's just full of fun little things. Like these are my cards that I use for filming videos. This is the Summer and Cali card because you know a little bit of the footage goes to the next video so I keep that video separate. I mean that card separate. Uh, my nail stuff for painting my nails. This is a color I use all the time. That's the company. Can you see it? It's Mineral Fusion. And the color is Tiara. So, in case you were wondering. Glue sticks. Whole bunch of glue sticks. Here we have our scissors. Crafting scissors. Sewing scissors. And our uh, rotary blade right there. And next to that, Tacky Glue. Mod Podge. Tape. Glue sticks, love me some glue sticks. And I need to refill this container. And here we have the juice from Kenny Doll 2017. And an assortment of paints. So recently, if you've been watching our shorts, I had to go through my paints because I didn't really have any good ones. <laughs> and this is pretty much me starting over on paints. This is what we got here. It's like the basics from Michaels. It's like one of those, uh, I think it was like 16 or so in a pack and I bought one of those and just added a couple metallics like silver gold and stuff like that down below We have the balcony that we put outside of our windows and it has some of the film equipment that uh, The camera guy uses in summer in Cali. This is my sewing machine And it's covered up, you know the little the little sewing machine cover and my label maker <gasps> I love you use that a lot. These are these little lights 
the company is Lytra. I think that's how you say it. I don't know. My husband bought these to go on like a motorcycle or a skateboard. I don't know, something like that. Anyway, I saw how useful they could be, so I borrowed them. Yeah, haven't given them back. These are stands for the lights. They just uh, go on the end, and then I shine them through a dollhouse window, and that's how I create the illusion of like, you know, the sun and stuff. Back when I didn't have... <gasps> A window! There is more film equipment in the corner. We got several tripods there. Then we have uh, camera lenses, batteries, all that fun stuff. More Osmo Pockets, the DG, DJI, which is a, uh, it's on a, a gyro, I think it's called. I forgot, I don't know. But anyway, it allows you the camera to stay balanced when I'm moving around. So that's some equipment over there that I use for horseback writing lessons and when we film horse stuff. Then here is my little clapboard, which I haven't cleaned. This is a box of fabric, which doesn't have a lot of fabric in it yet because we literally just moved into the studio. I haven't had time to fill it up yet. And above that, I have a box of presser foots for the sewing machine. So let me show you, this thing has got a lot in it. I bought it on Amazon. And look at that, there's like a ton. So that's gonna be useful when sewing. This is where I keep my doll rugs. Most of them are mouse pads and placemats from Amazon and they look really good in the doll photos. Here we have smart doll clothes. Most of the clothing is by Elite Doll World on Etsy. And then I have a whole bunch of Smart Doll wigs by Doll of a Kind. We do have a video for these. And uh, look at that one. It's so very Cruella. I keep my paper cutter on top of that box. And then right next to it, we have our smaller containers filled with the little things. Like doll shoes, I'm trying to keep them color coordinated. And we have miniature food. Most of these items are from One Curious Box on Etsy. And I try to keep everything separated so it stays protected. Oh, that one's 3D printed and is from Stovall the Doll or printed by Stovall on Etsy. Underneath, we have a box of 3D printed stuff. Some of it works, some of it doesn't. I thought this chair came out or this stool came out pretty cool and uh, I made it in silver and put it in one of our doll houses. When I make stuff on the 3D printer, I kind of just like <laughs> give it away. So um, yeah, if you follow me on Instagram, you'll probably catch one of those days when I'm like, you know what, we're gonna do a 3D printed giveaway and I just kind of give away like random stuff. Usually dishes, because I'm okay at making dishes. In the corner, we have rolls of paper, a couple more decals from Fathead there. But yeah, these are just like big tubes of paper that we can use as backdrops. And I have a couple different colors. And that is pretty much my new doll room. Oh yeah, and Bella left her chandelier, so that's pretty cool. From wall to wall, I am pretty much happy with it. I absolutely love how we organized our doll rooms, clothes, and dolls. Can't even tell walking in that that's what it is. It's all nice and neat. Looks like an office space. Allowing the eye to focus on the dolls that are on display. How long will all of this stay cleaned is probably the question. And I am going to tell you, it's going to stay clean. I have a system in place and I think I should be able to keep it up because we're coming into this space already done. So. Um, I'm fairly confident I can keep my room clean. I feel like that was a pretty in-depth tour, right? Right? I went over a lot of stuff. So I want to say thank you for joining us while we walked around our new doll room, film room, craft room. And this is the room you will start to see in our YouTube lives. You'll probably even get to see my next craft project on my film table in the back or if I'm unboxing something because it's gonna be pretty much behind us. So I just realized we are not going to be able to get Caroline's coffee shop in here. Oh no, 
we're gonna have to figure something out. That's a problem for another day. Like, comment, share, and subscribe. Don't forget to ring the bell and follow us on Instagram at my froggy stuff and the frog vlog and Bella of my froggy stuff and we will see you next time.